Hey guys, this video will look at how interest rates can affect inflation. But before we go on to the crux of this video, we're going to talk about how expansionary monetary policy, expansionary monetary policy, and this is when the RBA loosens its interest rate target, so this means they have a lower target cash rate. Expansionary monetary policy will never lead to a higher inflation rate above the target range. And this is because the achievement of the goal of low inflation is the RBA's main goal. And so they are always forward looking and they will not conduct monetary policy if it would jeopardize the achievement of this goal. So what we're going to look at is how contractionary monetary policy MP can slow inflation rates. So the RBA would only conduct contractionary monetary policy if this would decrease in interest rates. It would conduct expansionary monetary policy to promote economic growth when it has already achieved this goal of low inflation and it realizes that expansionary monetary policy would not actually cause inflation to rise so quickly as to not achieve this goal or to cause inflation to rise above this target range. Now we're going to talk about how expansionary monetary policy can increase economic growth in a later lecture. But this video we're just going to focus on how interest rates can affect or how contractionary monetary policy to be more precise can slow inflation. Now this can be slowed through three different channels. I'm going to look at these three channels one by one. So high interest rates would then affect consumption expenditure. So as we know, one of the main causes of inflation is this demand inflation. And this is caused by an excess of aggregate demand over aggregate supply. So we know that aggregate demand is a component or can be broken down into C plus I plus G plus net exports. And so when the interest rate increases, this means that we have more incentive to save. So we talked about the reasons we have to save, and this may be because we want to purchase a large product, or a large purchase at the end of our, once we save up enough money, so such as a house or a car. So we save our money in order to allow for this purchase um, of a car or house as our final goal. And so when the interest rates increase, that means we are getting more return for our money and there we, therefore we have more incentive to save. And then what this means is that we have less incentive to spend on large purchases. Because as we talked about, when we buy a house, oftentimes people don't have enough money to purchase, say, a half a million dollar house up front. People don't have that, many, that much money in their bank account, so they have to borrow money. And when they borrow money, they have to pay a return on that money above what the principal was. So if they wanted to borrow, say, $200,000 to purchase a house, then they may have to pay back an extra uh, $300,000 in interest over, say, a 25-year period. And that can be a lot of money, especially if interest rates are high. So that discourages people to spend on large purchases at the moment and encourages people to save more. So it won't affect people, say, to buy coffee, but it, it affects people by houses or cars or large purchases such as that. And what that means is that consumption expenditure in the economy, that will decrease. And since that is a component of aggregate demand, we will see that demand inflation is eased. So that's the first uh, effect and a high rate of inflation has on a high rate of interest has on inflation. So demand inflation is ease. Secondly, we we know that inflation is measured by the, the CPI. And we know that when inflation incre or when interest rates increase, this would cause exchange rates to appreciate. And
if we want to go through, if you want to understand why exchange rates appreciate, you can go through the lecture on interest rates and, ex and its effect on the exchange rate. But for now, we're going to know, we're going to assume that exchange rates are going to appreciate due to greater demand for our securities, and therefore to purchase these securities, our currency. So this is simple demand supply analysis. So when our currency appreciates, this A makes exports more expensive and imports cheaper. And so since exports and imports, again, are components of this aggregate demand equation, when exports increase, so when exports decrease and imports increase, we can see that net exports actually decrease. And when net, net exports decreases, aggregate demand again decreases, and therefore inflation disease. Also another factor is this concept that imports are also used in the calculation of CPI, because they're what we consume as goods and services, and they fall within the basket of goods and services that we consume as metropolitan households, and therefore is calculated in the, ca in the measurement of CPI. And so when our imports become cheaper, then the CPI would therefore decrease, or the consumer price index would decrease. decrease. And because the consumer price index is what we use to measure inflation, when the consumer price index decreases, therefore inflation would again decrease. By the same token, because we know that imports, apart from being consumable final goods and services, these are also contribute to 80% of inputs of businesses. So what this means is that the inputs of businesses become cheaper. And when inputs of businesses become cheaper, then the business can maintain their profit margin without the need of marking up prices. So they can actually decrease their price to gain that competitive edge over their rivals. And when they when businesses decrease their price, therefore this again will be reflected in the CPI here. And the CPI would decrease because in Australia we consume a fair amount of domestic goods and services. And because we consume domestic goods and services, they are included in the calculations of CPI. And since businesses have a cheaper uh, rate of production, and therefore they can have the scope to actually decrease prices to gain that competitive edge, and therefore that would flow onto the overall final price but, um, as bought by consumers. And finally, we can see that higher rates of interest actually depress inflationary expectations. So we talked about this concept that inflation occurs just because people have the expectation that it will occur. So when people have low confidence, they would think, okay, maybe in the future inflation would very much increase. And so to protect our purchasing power, we're just going to build this into our wages. We're going to, because of the prevalence of um, enterprise bargaining in the economy at the moment, people will start start to bargain with their bosses and say, okay, I want a pay rise because I want to protect my purchasing power. Because I think inflation is going to increase in the future. And so, but with high interest rates, people have less expectation that inflation would increase, and therefore they have less incentive to actually bargain with their bosses and say, okay, I want to increase my wage because of inflationary causes. And because they have less incentive to, uh, because they have less expectation of inflation to occur, and that means inflation would be a self-fulfilling prophecy, and so inflation would ease as a result. So oftentimes, high interest rates have direct connotations with low or um, high high interest rates yeah, have a direct connotations with low rates of inflation. And so as this depresses inflation expectations, inflation as a result in reality would therefore not occur. So there are, that's the three channels through which in, in, interest rates can affect inflation. Firstly, that it affects consumption expenditure through C, uh, because people have less incentive to spend and more incentive to save their money. Secondly, 
through exchange rates. How exports become more expensive, imports become cheaper, and since imports and exports again are components of aggregate demand, this will ease demand inflation as well as decrease the consumer price index because imports become cheaper. And thirdly, high interest rates automatically mean that people have less less expectation that inflation will occur in the future and consequently result in a lower rate of inflation.